Welcome to your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast with Deanna Hobbs, founder of Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, broadcasting live from our headquarters studios in Buffalo, New York. Visit us online at empoweringeverydaywomen.org. Today's inspiration is to assure you that God will give you the strategy. In life, we all reach places where it's not that we don't know what to do, but we just don't know how to do it which can conjure up feelings of frustration, confusion, and defeat. But even when we don't know what approach to use to get to the place we need to be, God is the supreme strategist who is never confused, but always faithful when we ask and trust him to show us the right approach to take to conquer every enemy and lay hold of all the blessings he has for us. Welcome to this year, Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022 edition of your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast. I am your host, Deanna Hobbs, your bestie from Buffalo, feeling so good in the studio. I feel good. I knew that I would now. See, (laughs) I knew that was going to happen because... That's my daughter Kaya's fault. She was singing that, acting silly at home yesterday. Oh, and Bestie, speaking of Kaya, you know my shower caddy trauma, right? It, it fell on my head in the shower, got soap in my eyes, triggered my PTSD. Bro, it was a mess. Well, I told y'all, I don't even want the thing no more, right? So I had my husband, Kenya, take it out of the tub. So I get ready to have me a nice shower yesterday, okay? And I was bragging to the kids about how, like, yeah, I bet that shower caddy won't hit me in the head no more. It ain't even in the tub. And you know what Kaya said to me? She said, hey, it might just spark another memory. (laughs) Bro, roasted me instantly, and I laughed so hard. Now, if you ain't listening to my shower caddy story, you don't know why I laugh. But she ain't do me right. So you know what I did? I was like, nah, I'm not about to be scared of this shower caddy. I got that thing myself. It took a little figuring out, okay? Maybe I wet up the floor a little bit, but that's neither here nor there. But I put it back. And bestie, I overcame that fear. Now, I was a little jumpy about the shower caddy, though. I ain't gonna cap. Gotta tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. But I did it. So hey, Glory to God. But man, I'm, I'm so happy to be here again. Happy to have the chance to share the gospel. And this is day, bro. I was trying to practice before I got on air and then forgot what day it is. Y'all know I've been trying to count down how many uninterrupted days God been blessing me to do this podcast. Dang, bro. But I do know Friday will be a month of podcasting and my bestie's been praying and celebrating and hanging with me every day. And I'm so turned up about it. I'm excited. We've been getting this gospel out. And so I just appreciate you, man. I appreciate God. I feel his strength and his presence with me. I do bestie, like for real. I couldn't do none of this without the Lord. And he sent you to me. You help advance the like the mission of the 501c3 nonprofit. You give generous donations so we can keep on sharing Jesus and and sending humanitarian aid all around the world and keep these broadcasts free and available on select radio stations, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, my YouTube channel at Deanna Hobbs, your dailycupofinspiration.com, on my Facebook page uh, at Deanna Die Hobbs, And you know what? Wherever podcasts are heard. And y'all, I love hearing from you online. However you reach out to me, besties, y'all be having me praising and crying and laughing sometimes. And there is one of our besties in particular who blessed me so good with her testimony that I got to share it here. Her name is Tamika Morrison. And she's from straight out of the comments (laughs) because I don't know her city and state, but This is what she wrote. I'm still praying and believing God for your total healing. I too experienced a traumatic brain injury from two separate car accidents in which I was rear-ended. I sustained injuries to my cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and my left shoulder. My God. 
These injuries left me in grave and debilitating pain for a total of eight years. The doctors told me that these were permanent injuries and that I would never heal or be pain-free again. The damage to my neck was unable to be repaired. I now have artificial discs in my neck to replace the damaged discs. I was still in extreme pain after the neck surgery. My doctors wanted um, my doctors wanted me to have additional surgeries or take opioids for the pain. I decided to leave my doctors because I did not agree with this course of treatment. I am happy to report that God healed me in January 2019. I have been pain free for three years. I am now working and went on to receive my master's degree in 2020. Everything that the doctors told me I would never do again. I am currently doing at present. I serve an amazing God. So I know God to be a healer because he healed me. I love you and have a great day. Listen, besties, glory to God. This testimony sent me into the ugly cry when I read it. Tamika, sis, thank you for sharing this. Thank you for reminding me of the greatness of the God we serve. And today, you know what? We gonna praise on this one, but but we gonna do it for me because this helped change my life in a positive way and confirm that God ain't through with me yet. So can, can we get a crazy praise break right here? And inspiring testimonies like this remind us that God is transforming lives through this ministry. We are grateful for your support that keeps these broadcasts available online as a free resource to help others grow in their faith. If you are being blessed and you believe in our mission to share the gospel, sow a seed of any size at empoweringeverydaywomen.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. My, 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 my God, my good God from Zion. (laughs) My heart is full of praise and gratitude. Let's pray real quick. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, let's pray. Um, God, thank you for for your presence. I, I feel it so strongly today. And so I ask that you anoint this word and, and, and let it be a blessing to the person I know you sent to press play. I trust that what you release through me will speak to them at their point of need. In Jesus' name, amen. My God. Bestie, whew, you know, um, I was thinking about something like sometimes how I personally get frustrated because when it comes to my mental health and some of the these like annoying side effects of brain trauma, I'll have really good days, right? And then I'll have days when I feel like I took a bunch of steps backwards. And I, I'd be like, dang, I'm still battling with this. Like, bro, I thought I would be over this by now. That's why that testimony touched me so much. But sometimes I have those moments where I'm, I'll be like, why am I still putting my shirt on backwards? Like, why can't I say explanation, man? Yesterday, my oldest daughter, Kyla, by the way, she she had me cracking up in the kitchen because <laughs> y'all know it'd be some, some of them words I can't say. So, bro, she told me she was going to name her son. I got to spell it first. R-A-M-I-R-E-Z. Y'all know how I sound trying to say that. Talking about she should name my grandson Mimunez. <laughs> she ain't a drop of good. I laugh so hard. I told Kyla, that's okay. And then grandma going to teach him how to say his name. And he going to be walking around talking about, my 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 name is Mamunas. I'm going to teach him everything. Espanation, library. <laughs> I was tickled. Them Hobbs kids don't do me right. I told Kyla yesterday, show Liz, telling the besties. But honestly, they, they keep me laughing. But seriously, besties, there are those times where I'm frustrated. And I I think we all have frustrating battles, right? 
that we want to be over. We just want to be done. And we want that victorious testimony of completely overcoming. Like we we want to experience a total and complete obliteration. Okay, vocabulary. I said obliteration. Can't say explanation though, but we believe God. <laughs> we want the enemy to be obliterated, right? Remember when Moses said to the people um, in Exodus 14 and 13 at the Red Sea crossing, he was like, do not be afraid. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. That's one of my favorite lines in the Bible. No more forever. Like forever, ever, forever, ever. And while God is able to do that, sometimes he don't, right? I mean, for instance, God took me right back to 2 Samuel 5 last night. Besties, we had such a good time on the podcast. The Lord really met us yesterday. But this time I was in verses 22 to 25, and that's where he led me. And these verses, they contain um, three battles. I didn't get to talk about the third one yesterday. And these are the series of battles that David was fighting when he was the new king. And if you didn't have a chance to listen to yesterday's podcast titled, uh, He's the Lord of the Breakthrough, I recommend it. We we talked about the previous two battles. So we pick up today, sometime after God had gave David the victory over the Philistines. And it was just this marvelous supernatural victory. But scripture says after a while, and it don't specify how much time, just sometime later, Them sore losers, the Philistines, came back and again spread across the Valley of Rephaim, which we know means the Valley of Giants. And besties, won't the same giants just pop back up in your life and try you again? But you know what? Don't expect the enemy not to come back. When we fight him, it's not like a once and for all. Oh, he gonna come back. And when that happened, you know what you do? Do what David did. When them old ugly, ashy ankle Philistines came back again, verse 23 said, and again, David asked the Lord what to do. Now, that's what I'm talking about. So the devil can't come at you again and again. So you pray again and again. Since the devil ain't never going to get tired of fighting you, don't you never get tired of busting him all up in the mouth, fighting him with prayer. But besties, when David prayed and asked God what to do, I like that he didn't assume he already knew. Just because he was a skilled warrior who had beat the Philistines like on more than one occasion, right? No, he asked. And so God gave David the strategy. He said, don't attack the Philistines straight on. Mm -mm. They'll be expecting that. God said, I want you instead circle around behind and then attack them near these poplar trees. They ain't going to expect that. God told him, when you hear a sound that's like marching feet in the top of the poplar trees, be on alert. Because that's going to be the signal that the Lord is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. God said, when you employ my strategy and go the way I tell you to go. Oh, I I love this so much. He said, I'm going to send a sound from heaven signifying that the victory already belongs to you. So that means before you ever raise a sword to fight, you already know you won because you done heard a sound from heaven. And Bestie, the Bible said, when David did what the Lord said, man, he struck down the Philistines. Whoa, them jokers out again. But why did that happen? Because he asked. And that's how he received a new strategy from God, right? Bestie, some seasons and some battles, even when you feel like, oh, I got this, it requires a change up in strategy. And you can only get that from having the humility and awareness that For real, you need to go to God in prayer and do it regularly, daily, consistently, because we need God, the master strategist, and he'll give us the strategy if we ask him. So I've been I've been kind of learning that. Over the past couple of years, especially in my relationships at home, because I forgot a lot of stuff about my husband and my kids after them busted stupid seizures. And I I have had to relearn like how to communicate because like. There have been times I misunderstood what my family was trying to say. We would be on two different wavelengths. I wouldn't even know it. Or there have been moments when I said something in a way that didn't make sense to them at all. I thought I was being clear. 
Or there have been a bunch of times and really frustrating ones when it takes me a really long time to get a clear perspective or an understanding of their opinion or their personality or something simple like what a facial expression means. And I need some water. Hold on a second. It's taking me all day. (laughs) I ain't opened no bottle of water. I should have been ready. Sorry that took so long, Bessie. (laughs) I'm doing my best. Okay, so. Like, I used to walk around all the time, Bessie, thinking Kenya and the kids was, like, sad, hurt, worried, or, you know, thinking they was angry or maybe even sick if they wasn't smiling. I would always be like, what's wrong? You okay? You sure you need something? And I still have those moments. Like Bessie, sleepy and sad still today can look the same to me. Or you know how somebody would be concentrating real hard on something and maybe they start frowning? Well, being in deep thought and being real angry, they kind of look the same to me. So it can be like real confusing at times. And when my anxiety join up with my misunderstanding... I just be worried about a non-existent problem or trying to fix something that ain't broke. So I have had to pray a lot and ask God, Lord, please help me. I legit don't be understanding. So it's like I feel like a new mother sometimes. When I was a new mother, when Kyla, I brought her home, when she would cry, I know what was wrong. I would try everything like you want milk, you need diaper change, your stomach hurt, you want to be hell, you sleepy. I would be confused as heck. But As I got some more experience and had some more babies, I learned the difference in their cries. But man, when I came back from the hospital after brain trauma, I felt like I had lost my mothering skills. Like I lost the ability to understand my own kids and my husband. And that was painful. Man, I remember the day I looked at a baby picture of one of my own babies and was like, Hoppo, who this? I had no idea who they was in that photo. Man, that could have been anybody's kid for all I knew. And when my husband Kenya had to tell me who it was, I think Kenya was the one who told me. Dog on it, I can't even remember the details of the story. (laughs) But somebody told me who that child was. And that was my baby. And that right there crushed my soul. I, I, I was shattered. I mean broke and bestie I cry so hard like what kind of mother am I how you forget your own kids I was distressed that's when I knew you know how you get those moments in your life when when you know something ain't right that's when I knew oh something done went real wrong like real left upstairs because it was levels to that realization right because human beings we have this amazing ability to just deny realities we don't want to face like I will say my clothes shrunk in the dryer before I'm going to say I put on 10 pounds and forget you and everybody who is judging my skinny levels, my like my skinny legend status. The, the, jeans, the jeans shrunk, bestie, period. I left them in the dryer too long. My waist size did not increase. And that's when period, fight me. <laughs> you don't know my dryer and how hot it get. My dryer don't turn off on, on its own anyways. Nah, for real, it don't, bestie. I don't know what's wrong with it. That thing will keep going for 40 days and 40 nights if you don't turn it off. Your clothes be done evaporated in my dryer. Y'all pray that God bless me with a new one. <laughs> what am I doing today? Help my mind, Jesus. I'm tickled because that dryer be like running for Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired yet. Remember that song? <laughs> that thing be running. I done told y'all about my broke dryer. Why is I'm doing that today? Come get me somebody. Get me off this mic. Y'all, my brain be tripping and do not care at all. New Deanna brain be like, y'all better ask about me because I be doing that all the time. And that's on who? Mary had a little lamb. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I need a commercial break. Mayday, mayday, help. I blame my daughter, Kaya, for that last statement and about, and that's on who? Because she said that to me yesterday from that viral video. You know, all right, all right let, let me have some water and, and get myself together because I got some place to go.
I said y'all was praying for me earlier. I take that back. You ain't prayed nothing. <laughs> now I'm going to blame you for me acting up. No accountability. It's your fault. Do better, bestie. Do more. <laughs> That water break ain't done nothing, but gave me some lubrication for my throat to utter more foolishness. Who I'm tickled today. The makers of Prozac gonna be like, don't you ever say our name on air again and tell nobody you take our meds. You bad for business. You driving folks away from mental health help because of what it looked like. <laughs> they, gonna, they gonna be like, people feel like that Tyler Perry movie. Well, shoot, I could do bad all by myself. And that's if that's her getting help, I don't want it. Oh my gosh, bro! If I was in the Kojic convention, like I grew up in the Church of God in Christ, bestie, they would pull your coattail, like for real. If you go too long or you start cutting up, they'd be like, "All right, all right," and they start singing, "Yes, yes, 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 yes." That really means sit down. Sit down, you shouting too long. Sit down, you acting a fool. Sit down. <laughs> the bishop would get up. All right, precious. When me and my brothers and sisters was younger and my daddy was ready for us to hush, he would be like, all right, all right, you're running out. That meant, you, that meant you're doing too much, Bessie. You're running out. All right, all right. Okay, I'm running out. And you know what, though? What seems like a tangent... Wait a minute. Hold on. It actually fits perfectly into, today, into today's lesson because you get to see how different my brain is now versus pre-2019 brain trauma, right? There, there weren't these long tangents and free-flowing conversations like this. But nowadays, there is a new strategy for how to approach new Deanna. And, and the new strategy, the Lord, he gave it to me. And if you listen to the podcast yesterday, you already know. He was like, uh-uh, that strategy is you're going to stop apologizing and be embarrassed and just be who you are, knowing that I'm pleased with you, right? But just last night, bestie, here I go, let you in my notes between me and the Lord. But God told me, and I wrote it down, let me read it to you, because I think it's going to help somebody. God said, Deanna, let this be the last day that you in any way try to box yourself in. No longer try to fit the new you into an old mold. It won't work. Your season, your new season requires a new strategy. So stop trying to rein yourself in to fit who you were instead of embracing who you are, which is exactly who I called you to be in the current season. I allowed the change, God said, and I will use it for my glory. For you are exactly who you are now because this is who I need you to be for the work I've called you to do in this hour. Oh, thank you, Jesus. See, y'all y'all in my, my good notes. Who can benefit from that? Sometimes what we see is as regression is actually progression. To regress is, is to go backward and to progress is, is to move forward. But in, the, in, in God's kingdom, besties, sometimes progress don't feel like progress to us. But we would just do better to just remember that the Lord, who is the master strategist, is always in control. You don't know uh, why God allowed the changes that that you done went through or what you're going through even now in your life, bestie. But, but you know what you can know? That he will use all those changes to work together for your good and his glory. We don't like change. It upset our plans disrupt what we used to. And that's why the Pharisees, the keepers of the law, or maybe even better stated, the keepers of the status quo. That's what I like to call them because they couldn't stand change and they couldn't stand Jesus. Yeshua, the Messiah. He was upset old traditions and changing the way things was done. And we don't like changes. Come on, be honest. But you see, even though God is the same today, yesterday and forever, he do use different strategies and methods at different times to accomplish his will. So the Messiah, he was representing a new covenant and the Jewish leaders was kind of married to the old covenant. 
But it wasn't no way to stop what God was doing, even if it seemed unorthodox, because it was. It was unorthodox, but it was also a move of God. And sometimes God has to move some things around and change up a strategy to get you to go where he wants you to go and get you on a new track. He just will mess up your plans. Well, actually, he fixes them. It just feels like he messes them up. And, you know, I was thinking about, you know how Lamentations 3 and 22 says that his compassions fail not? That, that means they never fail. And, and that's, that's going to never change. But the next verse, verse 23 says, but his, ner- his mercies are new every morning. So every day that you have a new malady, ah, there's a new mercy for that. Uh-oh, bestie, I, I feel my help. God really, he just put it on my heart to tell somebody, don't be surprised by what appears to you to be disorderly conduct. I have to, I have to say it like he's given it to me. And so here in America, disorderly conduct, it means you're breaking the law. You know, you do that mess publicly, you're going to jail. And, and so Jesus regularly engaged in disorderly conduct. And as far as the Pharisees were concerned, he couldn't be the son of God because he seemed to be breaking the rules and regulations of the law of Moses that were established by God in the Old Testament. And God is saying, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck on what it looks like. Keep your eyes on me. I'm doing a new thing. Stay focused. I'm giving you a strategy. Listen, Jesus got arrested for disorderly conduct and his penalty was crucifixion. But little did those who crucify him know that that was the plan all along. What appeared to be disorderly conduct actually fell in line with divine order because that was always in God's plan. God don't get surprised by the twists and turns and like the ups and downs and, and the challenges and changes in our lives. No, God is in control. And so he already he already got a strategy in place. Before you ever arrive at that point, I already told you, God is a master strategist. We often hear experts, right? Leaders, coaches, teachers, and all kinds of folks giving master classes on how to get certain things done, shift your mentality, achieve greater things. And this can be helpful, especially when the one teaching the master class has some sound wisdom to share. But we got to remember that God is the master of all classes, of all people. There is no one above him, none wiser, none more powerful, none with greater strategy and execution. First Peter 5 and 11 says, for all power belongs to God now and forever. Amen. That means that's it. So you got to be open to his strategy. And sometimes God will tell you to modify your approach. Come at things from a different angle. View stuff from another perspective. Come at it another way. You know, when God was talking to me, bestie, he was like, Deanna, you can't put new wine in old wineskins. And Bestie, that sent me on a search for this Bible reference because I I knew that was a scripture. Um, And so I read about it in Matthew 9 and 14 through 17. And what was happening is John the Baptist's disciples ran up on Jesus like, why your disciples don't be fasting like us and the Pharisees do? We are extra holy and stuff. We, We got these public rituals to show everybody how sanctified we are. And for one, you know, Jesus wasn't a fan of that at all, first of all. The Pharisees and people with this mindset was always trying to perform to show they was righteous. But that was the exact mindset that Jesus came to break down. So that wasn't really a flex, even though they thought it was. Like my kids be saying, they thought they ate, but they didn't. They thought they was flexing on Jesus. Number two, Jesus hit them with some real good knowledge they wasn't expecting. He asked them, he said, do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? And then Jesus was like, um, no, but someday the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. See, besties fasting in the Old Testament was a sign of mourning and nations stopped eating and really sad, bad and rocky times. But Jesus was saying that he, the bridegroom, the Messiah, the one who was in covenant with Israel, he was like, I'm here now. So what my disciples got to be mourning about? This is a time of rejoicing over here. Jesus was like uh, uh, this, this meme where the guy says, I ain't finna argue with you. We happy. Y'all mad. Y'all big mad. (laughs) That's another meme that's stuck in my head. I ain't finna argue. But anyway, then Jesus went further and said, don't nobody put no new wine into old wineskins. 
because the old skins would burst from the pressure and then the new wine would spill out and ruin the old skins. And he told them new wine is put in new wine skins. So both the wine and the skins get preserved. Bessie's at first, I ain't gonna cap. I ain't gonna lie. It's like, Jesus, <laughs> like, what you trying to say? Cause I don't get it. But I did some researching and I, I realized that, and I learned that when wine is fermenting, it bubbles and it expands when these fermentation gases get released. And so a fresh new wine skin is flexible and it can handle the expansion and it can age with the wine. It can stretch. But an old wine skin, like, nah, bestie, I read about it. You don't want to put new wine in an old wine skin because the old wine skin already has like this fixed shape. It's rigid. It ain't flexible. It's all brittle. So new wine in an old wine skin, bestie, when it starts stretching, uh uh-oh, that wine skin won't be able to handle all that expansion. And and the skin going to bust open. And then the wine going to spill everywhere. And the skin going to be destroyed. And you done wasted all that time and money for nothing. Period. So you know what tripped me out about these dudes that came to Jesus, bestie? I got so annoyed when I was reading, like for real. Because I was like, John the Baptist disciples. That's who came to Jesus. Excuse me? Like... John the Baptist's whole reputation is built on the fact that he was out in the wilderness preparing everybody for the Messiah to come. John the Baptist personally has so much reverence for Jesus that he said out his own mouth in John 1, 27, bestie. Listen to what he said about Jesus. He said, the one coming after me, talking about Jesus, I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandal. I mean... John the Baptist was like, I ain't worthy to unbuckle Jesus' shoes. I ain't worthy to, I ain't worthy to, breathe, the same, to breathe the same air as this man. Bro, the respect for Jesus was so deep for John, as it should have been, that in Matthew 3 and 14, remember when Jesus went to John the Baptist and said, baptize me? I'm going to read that verse to you. It says, John tried to talk him out of it. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? So like, how John the Baptist disciples, whatever that even mean, going to run up on Jesus and charge him up like they weren't talking to the one they supposed leader taught them was the only one worthy like in the conversation at all. Like, I don't get it. How you step to Jesus like that? See, I was straight up annoyed, bro. I'd have been ready to fight somebody like what's good, fam. You lost or something? Back up, cuz. I'd have been like Peter in Jesus' day. Bro, Peter was about that life. Y'all remember when them soldiers came with that little traitor Judas to arrest Jesus? Judas gonna try to try to kiss Jesus with them crusty lips. And scripture said, Peter, that's little Peasy right there. He ain't play. Little Peasy had his sword. He whipped that joint out and cut off the right ear of the high priest servant, that dude Malchus. Remember, Little peasy, if it was 22, like if it was 2022, he'd have had a gat and been like, I'm about to catch a case. <laughs> but bro, <laughs> Jesus was like, Peter, if you don't calm down, put that sword away, bro. Jesus was so smooth, y'all. Then he touched Malchus's ear, reattached that joint. Couldn't have been me, bro. I left that joke a bleeding where he stood, but I ain't Jesus, though, obviously. Jesus knew why he came. He was like, stop resisting the purpose for which I came to earth, please, Peter. Just let it happen. Chill, chill, chill. Let it happen. I got to get crucified so I can redeem y'all knuckleheads from sin. But Jesus was kind and compassionate and good. Even, even with John the Baptist's disciples, they still get on my nerves, though. Man, scripture said... John the Baptist used to be walking around dressed in some old camel hair garment with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locust and wild honey. People thought John was nuts. He was anointed though, even though he looked crazy out there. Now, don't get it twisted. We ain't about to disrespect John the Baptist. He was, the, he was that street corner preacher like, repent or you're all gonna burn in hell. Jesus is coming, you drunkards, whoremongers, and thieves. <laughs> Y'all would have walked right by John the Baptist. Like, if you don't get your crazy self. But no, he wasn't crazy. He had good sense. He was preparing the way for Jesus. 
And his so-called disciples, though, John the Baptist's so-called disciples, they was out of pocket. Why your disciples don't fast like us, Jesus? Like, me and Lil Peasy would have been like, keep it stepping for you be picking up your teeth. They're trying to find your ear. It's not a game out here. We not new to this. We true to this. (laughs) Man, I want to meet Peter in heaven. I wonder if he's still going to be saying cusses. I don't know, but I'm going to be like, Peter, I want you to know, bro, after brain trauma, you made me feel validated and seen. Thank you, man. And thank you for cutting off Malch's ear. I agree with you. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> Let me stop. But Jesus wasn't on that petty stuff. He wasn't. He, he was really trying to teach. Even John the Baptist, dusty, annoying, self-righteous disciples, that you can't put new ideas into old mindsets. Jesus was doing a new thing, like, and he's still doing a new thing to this day. God put that in my spirit so heavy yesterday, bestie. I I think I wrote what he was saying to me on my Facebook page. God is doing something new. And and, and that's why he had you click on this podcast, because there's something in you somewhere deep within. I mean, even if you don't know exactly what it is yet, it's something being prepared for you and in you. But it's going to force you to abandon some old strategies and embrace some new things that God is doing. And he's going to give you greater victories. He's going to introduce you to new possibilities, new territory, give you fresh ideas, creative ways to advance his purpose in your life. And you know why? Wait, let me get some water because my mouth dry. Got the water break on deck. Um. But you know why this is this is gonna happen for you, Bestie? Why you going you know why you're gonna receive that new thing and it's gonna happen? Because you're not like the disciples of John the Baptist and the Pharisees, who was so married to their old traditional outdated outdated way of doing things and so resistant to change that they couldn't even recognize or accept the Messiah that they had been waiting for their whole life when he was sitting right there in front of their face. That ain't you, bestie. You like David when he was in the Valley of Rephaim facing familiar opponents. Instead of approaching the battle and saying, I know what worked before, so I'm just going to do that again. I'm going to do it the way I always do it. No, you ask God, what do you want me to do now? You trust the master strategist who tells you in Proverbs 3 and 6, acknowledge me in all your ways and I'll direct your path. Oh yeah, he's going before you. And securing the victory. Victory already belongs to you. Favor already belongs to you. Even when you don't know what to do. Don't worry. Even when stuff be looking crazy around you. Don't worry. God is saying, just ask me. I'm more than happy to help you. Uh, He's like, I know these are turbulent times. I know trouble is everywhere you look. But just like I told you, David, he was a trained, skilled warrior. He still asked the Lord what to do. And that's all you got to do. God is saying, you need strategies? Ask and it'll be given to you. You need help. Ask and it'll be given to you. Bestie, you need favor. Ask and it'll be given to you. You need direction. Ask and it will be given to you. You need my mighty hand to intervene in that situation. Just ask. As good as done. I'll bless you. That's what God is saying. I'm going to show you which way to go. I know you might feel confused sometimes, but I ain't going to leave you by yourself. And I'm not going to let the enemy defeat you. That ain't going to never happen. James 1 and 5 in the New International Version. And that's what I'm going to stir into your cup of inspiration today. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. Didn't say might, right? It said it will be given to you. Just ask. So as you drink down the contents of your cup, ask God for the wisdom, for the strategies, the methods, the opportunities, the favor. Ask for whatever you need and he's going to do it according to his will. God is going to give you the strategy you need for this season, the next season, the one after that. Even when it feels hard, I always tell you, for God, the master strategist, there is nothing too hard. Now let's pray. God, I pray for this, my sister, this, my brother. Thank you for 
letting them hear the sound of my voice today, which is confirmation from the sound of your voice that you've already gone before them and prepared the way for victory. So in times when they feel confused as if they're drifting in the dark with no answers or strategies, remind them that all they need to do is ask for your help and yield to your leading and they will be victorious in every season and defeat every enemy that comes against their destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. Your daily cup of inspiration has been brought to you by Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where we fuel your faith every day. For more information, log on to yourdailycupofinspiration.com.